You're listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. From our studios come special guests and netball commentary, exclusively on YouTube. Apologies, listeners, for not introducing my co-host, Luke Herbert. Luke was running through the studio after the coffee machine broke down. I certainly was, and I slipped over some spilt coffee as well, just for my troubles. G'day, listeners, and welcome back to the Three Feet Radio Show. We've been off air for a little while right now, but there's a new changing of the guard, obviously, with the new leagues in Australia and New Zealand. And um, one of the new teams coming up in New Zealand is the new... um, is, is, is the new franchise in Auckland. And joining us this morning is Julie Hornweg, the new coach of the new Auckland franchise. Good day, Julie. How are you? Good morning, Ben. I must say, uh, very, very, exci- very excited, first of all, to be uh, coaching some netball in New Zealand. Oh, fantastic opportunity to be coaching elite netballers. So very excited, although I'm not too crashed hot about Auckland. I've been over here for a few days and the traffic and the weather has not been very pleasant. So hopefully things brighten up on that uh, on that front. Well, welcome to the program, Julie, and Ben's forgotten to introduce me. He's been so excited, and for the sake of this program, I have to take off my steel supporter hat and try and be objective. Oh, I know, yes, and, and anyone that knows Southern Netball mm-hmm. fans will know that's quite something, but just, you know, you oh, mentioned yeah. Auckland. What was the reason behind wanting to move across to Tasman and coach the new Auckland-based side? Oh, the opportunity to coach elite netballers again. Um, it's just... Uh... They're fantastic to work with. The New Zealand style of game is very different to the Australian one. So for me, it was hopefully a chance to bring my skills um, and my skill set across here, but also to be challenged by uh, a new way of playing the game and perhaps growing my skills as well. Julie, some of the New Zealand teams are already far advanced with their recruitment. Have you started that process at all yet? Oh, yes, Ben. We're a fair way down the track. We've got to think about a little over half of our group already organised, so that's good. And I know you can't name any names or anything, but Ben and I were talking about this off air, and you know, you look at other teams that have announced signing. So, what can you t- tell us about the recruitment process? We've um, ours is probably maybe taken a little bit longer because we really want to make sure that we have looked quite extensively uh, through Auckland. We want to make sure that uh, this new team has uh, as ground roots in Auckland and it celebrates the athletes that are coming through the pathways here. So we've been talking to mostly Auckland-based players, but um, if we can't fill all of the positions with local talent, we'll be looking elsewhere. That local talent thing, uh, Julie, is a big thing because I remember when you were coaching the Vixens, you were always about trying to um, recruit local Victorian-based players, and even if they even if they had been in another team interstate and they're coming back to Victoria, you wanted to recruit them. Um, why have you always been like that of having locally based talent in your teams you've coached? Well, I just um, I love junior development. I've one, that's one of my strong skill sets, and I think it's important that athletes have the opportunity to have a pathway from the earliest level that they play netball through to elite. And if they take the opportunities and show that they have the skills, both physically and mentally, I think there should be a pathway for them. So I've always been passionate about providing that. And it's important that this we're, we're the only new team over here, unlike Australia, we have three new ones. We're the only new team. So we have to be quick off the mark to establish ourselves a base and a supporter group and connect with the community. And this is certainly another way of doing that. Well, I've got to say, I'm very excited about the prospect of a new team entering the competition. And I think it's, I think it's sort of added a bit of interest for at least me personally. And I just want to stick with pathways for a moment. And, but what are your thoughts on rulings that limit players from dropping back to lower levels? And I'm primarily referring to the, um, Vico National Netball League here. And by that question, I mean the example Ben and I have used off off air was Hellpenny, a, a player for the Magic who would play enough quarters that she didn't qualify for the, the Vico League, but probably needed an opportunity to drop down a level just to regain some form. So, Luke, I'm sorry, I'm not quite up to date with all of the lower level... Well, um, what, 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 look, we're so getting that, at, that, what, what we're getting at... Yeah. And I'm just going to qualify this a little bit more for the listener too. 
is that with the back, the Biko National Netball League, there was only so many quarters, I believe, a player could play in the ANZ Championship and then still qualify for that competition, if that makes sense. There was some, yep. so, something yep. similar for the A&L, I believe. And, and the one flaw with that, that Ben and I have discussed off air, is that if you have a player that is, you know, has lost a bit of form or confidence, they've exceeded that number of quarters, they can't then drop back to the Biko League and you know, regain a bit of confidence and form. So what do you think oh, of in that? A, oh, in an ideal situation, that would be what you'd want to, to happen. Go back, play a couple of quarters, even a, a game, um, regain some form, some confidence, get a touch of the ball. Um, but don't underestimate the ability. Like a training, you would play match play situations. So one would think within the training environment, they are getting that opportunity to play some court type play, albeit it's not under the pressure of playing in a competition. But um, and you often bring in. There'll be train on players for this um, this group next year, so there will be plenty of opportunity to play games within the training environment. But you're right, the competition is. Why we all train, we, lo- we love it. That's where we test our skills under pressure. So in an ideal world, I, I would like them to be able to drop back if on a needs-be basis. And just on the New Zealand style of play too, Julie, are you looking forward to uh, to working with that quite closely? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, they, they play some very athletic netball over here and their defensive structures are a little fairly different to what we play in Australia, but I want to embrace some of that, but I'd also like to infuse that with a bit of the Aussie style and you know, perhaps some one-handed passes might be zipped down court and there might be a little bit more of a one-on-one game. But, you know, we'll wait and see um, where they're at and what capabilities we have within the group. But I'm hoping there'll be a great fusion between the two. And although she's in a Kiwi, Julie, um, she's an English girl. Your relationship with Jeeva and um, Jeeva Mentor is quite well known. I believe you told, identified her when you were coaching in England many years ago. Yes, I did. She was 17, sitting on the bench for the national 17 and under team. And I thought, well, if all she's going to sit on a bench, uh, and I spoke to the coach and she didn't seem to think that she'd get a lot of court time. So I thought, well, if she's going to sit on a bench, she might as well come up and sit on my national bench and be learning from the best in the country. And so as a 16-year-old, very unheard of in England in those days, um, came up and joined the national squad and look where it took her to international level and is one of the most celebrated um, netballers in the world. So that's the sort of opportunity I'd like to create here in Auckland too, particularly in the south part of Auckland. We're going to be, we're going to be based in the south, so um, particularly giving, and apparently um, there's quite a few centres down here and there are many talented players that haven't been given opportunity in the past, so... Um, I'm really looking forward to that sort of prospect. So find another Jeeva mentor and give her an opportunity. And I'm sure it'd be even um, you get more satisfaction if hopefully one day one of those players your ID was hope, hope, will hopefully be running around in the black dress one day for the Silver Ferns. That would be lovely. That mm. would be fantastic. But what about, and I get, this is off the beaten track, but what about young Kelsey Rainbow from Tasmania in the Australian 21 squad? So, you know, Tassie don't produce too many internationals, but hopefully young Kelsey you might get there. Yeah, I saw that, Julian. Obviously, you, you would have had a bit to do with her through your work with the ANL in Tasmania and also the high performance environment, too. Yes, absolutely. So, very excited. And she's just come off um, a big rehab program. So, to get her back in time for selection has been very w- rewarding for our program and absolutely delightful for her. And I just want to switch gears here slightly, but staying with programs, you might say. Knowledge and resource sharing is something netball does well with other sports. So are you going to be looking to, you know, looking towards other sports when the, the new franchise is being set up? And I'll just again qualify this question slightly for the listener and yourself. Ben and I were just chit-chatting this, about this off air. And we were just talking about, Ben mentioned the Sydney Wanderers as a successful upstart franchise. And we were just talking about, you know, Greater Western Sydney's heading for the finals for the first time in the AFL. So... You know, are those sort of good examples that you can learn from? Oh, and rugby's a religion over here, isn't it? So if I can get in and see any of the rugby teams in actions and training, uh, that would be a fantastic opportunity for me and certainly to learn from some of the programs, um, certainly the All Blacks and to some degree the Kiwis have had some success and certainly the 
sevens over time, and that, that's a very uh, high aerobic capacity sport. So if I can get in and meet some of those, I was at um, High Performance Sport New Zealand yesterday to meet with the staff there. So opportunities to link in with coaches and learn and perhaps even share perhaps some of my learnings would be a great opportunity. And it's not just a religion, it's a fanatical religion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been in Fiji for three years. I know what rugby does to a nation. So, And they'll be very excited with their gold medal in the sevens. Oh, look, they, they had a public holiday. <laughs> One, I would think they had more than one. They would have had a couple, I would have thought. Don't they say it's the game that it's the game they play in heaven, Julie? Yes, something like that, uh, Ben. They just so the year the Fiji netball team came sixth at the world tournament. We won team of the year, and we had a street parade. So, and oh. the rugby boys oh. came eleventh. So, yeah. we got had um, Billy. Mina Davu, who then came to New Zealand to play, she won Athlete of the Year, and I won Coach of the Year. So we wiped um, rugby off the map for just a little for twelve months, mm-hmm. which was a big, big um, reward for our our fine performances. Yeah, and just changing direction a bit here, Julie. Um, you've been you were part of the early years of the now defunct ANZ Championship competition. Do you feel New Zealand and Australia are heading in the right direction or wrong direction by reverting back to separate competitions? It's going to be really interesting, isn't it? Totally mm. different outputs. Yeah. Um, Australia, unlimited imports. New Zealand, where it's only allowed one import per team. So I, I, the philosophy behind New Zealand's um, approach to this new competition is to try and develop a, a broader base of skillful athletes. And the one import will, I would think, allow that to happen. What it might also discourage is more elite players coming in to be competitive against your elite players. So it's an interesting direction. And Australia, with their unlimited, if they take too many imports in, um, may find that they have lack of numbers for their national squad. So, yeah, there's positives and negatives in both. And I'm guessing time will time will be um, the, the sort of the finding uh, information out. Do you think for the new Australian-based competition, which i got to say, even though there won't be any New Zealand teams in it. You know, I'm actually quite excited about it. I'm quite excited that there will be no limits on imports. Because, you know, I really enjoyed the Anja Championship in short. And, and if we exclude the World Cup and the Commonwealth Games, I actually enjoyed it more than international netball because of the number of different teams and variety of players on offer. But just coming back to my actual question, do you think it's possible then there could be a sort of trial period? And if the balance isn't quite right, do you think they could put, like, say a limit of, say, three imports per team, just so you still have the excitement of those players coming in while still maintaining you know, opportunities for homegrown players? I think everyone's just learning across this period now, so um, I'm sure that they will review it at the end of 12 months. I think there's even some hope that at the end of each season there might be a, a crossover period where teams could play the top teams from New Zealand might play the top teams from Australia. So there are a number of ideas still on the drawing board. So I think um, everyone will play out 12 months, have a little look at it and um, review their programs and see how it can be improved. Just on New Zealand there, Julie, limiting limiting it to one import, do you think that's a smart idea because it therefore means that um, that local local athletes can come through? Because I know there was some debate here quite a few years ago when some teams were when, when some teams were trying to over recruit um, players from other states that weren't um, in their pathway and stuff like that. Yeah, um, and I think there was one year when the Australian team, because everybody in at the time was importing either a goalkeeper or a goal shooter, there was one time that the Australian team only had something like three or four goal shooters to choose from that were playing at elite level and so opportunities were limited so it, it can be a negative but it's also very exciting to see you know, England play a little bit differently to us, certainly Jamaica do so to have some of those involved in your program certainly add some finesse and some excitement about your game but this system that New Zealand have chosen will will certainly grow their talent pool 
All right, Julie, thanks very much for joining us today and look forward to keeping in touch once the season starts. Um, I'm sure we'll keep in touch. You know, you're an old friend of mine and you're a long-time supporter of mine and um, thanks for being on the show. Yes, and hopefully we can talk quite regularly across the season. and That'd be great. Um, show the- and um, show Luke that perhaps the North is going to be stronger than the South. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Sorry, Luke. Sorry uh, about that. I'm sure some <laughs> historical jokes I could make there related to American history, but I won't. <laughs> the listener would just think I'm <laughs> weird enough as it is. But, um, look, thank you very much for joining us here in the studio. Well, and, look, my pleasure. just before I put my still supporter hat back on, because it's, it's getting, you know, sad on the chair it's sitting on. Look, I wish you all the best setting up the new franchise and I, I hope to see your team in the finals within the next few years. That would be fantastic. Thank you, Luke, and thank you, Ben. You've been listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. Tune in next time for more special guests and netball commentary exclusively on YouTube.